In this video, I will take you through setting up and getting flying with your new drone. Before moving on, it's important to get your new drone's batteries charging. As a rule, you should never start a flight with a discharged battery. If your controller also has rechargeable batteries, you should get those charging now as well. If you live in the US, it is now mandatory that you register your drone with the FAA. This process is free until the new year, after which it will cost $5. You will need your drone seal number to complete this process. While you're waiting for your drone's batteries to finish charging, it's a really good idea to go familiarize yourself with the user's manual. And if you don't want to read the whole user's manual, the at least the quick start guide for your drone. I've linked a couple of the popular ones down in the video description. They're super helpful. They take about 15 minutes to read, so get a good cup of coffee and go have a look at those. After your batteries are charged, you need to find a good place to take your first flight. There are some things you should keep in mind. Only fly in open areas, avoid areas which are surrounded by trees, buildings, and anything like that. You want a nice big open field to fly in. Do not fly in severe weather conditions. Rain, wind have a big effect on your drone, so don't fly in them. Wait for a nice calm day and it'll be much easier to get flying with your drone for the first time. Avoid obstacles, crowds, high voltage power lines, trees, and bodies of water. These are all things which your drone is not going to get along with crowds. People don't really like having these quadcopters flying over them, so avoid them, especially for your first flight. Find a nice secluded area and get it flying for the first time. You also need to minimize electronic interference. Avoid areas with mobile phone base stations, radio transmission towers, high voltage power lines, and Wi-Fi hotspots. All of these things interfere with the drone talking to the remote control and can lead to flyaways and bad things and losses in communication with your drone happening. So avoid those areas at all costs. Find a nice area away from those things to take your first flight. And most importantly, avoid airports. These are no-fly zones. You cannot fly a drone in them. If you need more information, check out the no-fly zone list, which is on either the DJI Phantom website. There's a link to that down in the video description. But don't fly near them. We, as drone operators, need to make sure that we do it safely so that we can continue to use these without big registration fees and public training. So be smart and don't fly where you shouldn't be flying. With your spot chosen and your batteries charged, you need to put an SD card into the camera on the drone. Most of the time, this should be a high-speed card like what you would use in a GoPro Hero 4 Black. You're gonna put the drone on the ground in the big area you've decided to fly in and make sure that the flight mode is set to P. This is important on the DJI Phantom as it has several different flying modes. P is the one which uses the GPS positioning system on board the uh, drone to keep it in a position when it's not being controlled from the operator. This stop, this means that the drone itself counters wind activities and things like that to keep it in the same spot. This is the mode that I fly in almost all the time and if you're flying one of these you're going to want to use it as well. You're going to turn on the remote control by pushing and holding the power button. If you haven't already you're going to put a battery into your drone and turn it on as well. You're going to check to make sure that the LEDs on the controller and the drone show that the drone is connected to the remote control on a Phantom. This means that the controller's LED has gone green. Then you're going to mount your phone or tablet onto the controller, launch the app, and ensure that your phone is connected to the controller via Wi-Fi or the USB cable. Check the app's readout and make sure that there's no errors found, no updates pending, and that it says good to fly. Then you're going to calibrate the compass of the drone. This is a critical step, especially the first time you fly, but from every time you fly in a different location, you must recalibrate the compass. This is kind of what the the uh, drone uses to know exactly where it is and base all of its direction and um, corrections off of. So it's super important that you calibrate the compass every time you fly. You'll avoid huge headaches and um, you'll avoid your drone misbehaving, if you will, in the air. Then you're just going to attach the props using the wrench that's provided to tighten them down and you're all set to fly. There's just a few last things you want to make sure that the LED readout on your drone or on the, the app is reading GPS locked safe to fly. 
This means that it, the drone has all of the GPS satellites it needs to know exactly where it is. If you fly without these, you will not have the added benefit and security of the drone knowing where it is. Return to home won't work. Uh, it won't hover properly. It'll get blown in the wind. So all of these things rely on the GPS getting a good GPS lock. So wait until that happens. And if it's not happening, you're probably covered by something, trees or buildings. So move to a more open area before you try flying. If the app reads out safe to fly, then you are ready to go. For your first flight, you're gonna put the drone on the ground facing away from you. This means the camera will be facing away from you. This is the optimum orientation and the orientation which the controls of the controller are set up in so it'll be very natural to control the drone. On your controller, you have two sticks. The left stick controls altitude up and down and rotation of the drone. This rotates the drone like an airplane side to side. On the right hand controller, you have the movement of the drone. This moves the drone forward and back and left and right. For your first flight, do not turn the aircraft. Only use the left stick to control elevation and then move the aircraft with the right stick. This will keep the aircraft pointing away from you and will keep, it, will keep you from getting confused with what orientation the aircraft is in. When flying, always keep your movements on the control sticks small. You never ever need to move the control stick all the way to, ed to the edge. You wanna make sure that all your movements are small and controlled. This keeps you in control of the aircraft. This stops you from flying the aircraft into objects. You wanna make sure that everything you do with it is purposeful and meaningful and at least when you're starting to fly, start small. With that safety talk and controller talk out of the way, it's time to start the drone. On a DJI Phantom, you're gonna bring both control sticks down to and in. On a uh, Solo from 3DR Robotics, you're gonna push the start button and you're ready to go. Do one last check to make sure that the drone has a GPS fix, battery power, and there's no warning messages on the screen. And then slowly move the left stick up. The motors will spin faster and the drone will lift off the ground. Release the stick when the drone is about 10 feet or three meters off the ground. With no input on the sticks, the drone should sit in the air without moving. Now we'll try adding a little bit of movement. So we'll move the right stick, saw right, and the drone will crab right. We'll move it left, the drone will crab left. We'll go forward and back. And with that, you are flying your new drone. When flying, there are just a few things to keep in mind. Fly in open areas, always fly in locations that are free and clear of buildings, trees, power lines, and other obstacles, and never fly above people or animals. Maintain control at all time, even when flying in an autopilot mode on one of these new drones. Keep your hands on the stick so that you can take control if needed, and maintain line of sight with your, with your drone. It's critical that you can always see what it's doing. Do not rely on the live preview that's coming through the app to be your guide of where your drone is. Always make sure that you can see it and maintain your altitude. As regulated by federal regulations, you must keep your aircraft at less than 400 feet. That's 120 meters above ground level. Or if you're not in the States, you check your local regulations to find out what your regulations on height are. Guys, that was my video on getting up and flying safely with your new drone. If you've enjoyed it, you should check out my list of must have accessories for the new drone pilot. That's linked down in the video description. You should also follow me over on Instagram, Kyle Martin Tech over there. Most of all guys, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and thanks so much for watching.